Hello, welcome back. Uh, so here's our first problem looking at uh, binomial probability distribution. Uh, in this exercise, I I'm actually going to do a simplified version of this, this problem uh, before I actually do the problem. So maybe I'll do this as sort of a prequel and then we'll, we'll do the next, um, another video that, that covers off exactly this problem. Just because I, I want to make it a little bit easier to follow before we get into larger numbers. So we'll use the same context. So uh, th we're, we're, <laughs> we're a nerdy student, we've arrived at class and we want to apply some statistics. Um, so we're looking at the gender of students entering the room. Uh, it's a binomial experiment. There's two possibilities, male or female. Uh, and let's assume that the university's profile page states the current student population is 40% uh, female, 60% male. So what we're going to do, th the reason I want to do this in a simplified way is because the, the formula that we're going to be using uh, to calculate the frequency or the probability, it looks it looks kind of daunting. Something like this: um, p k one minus p times n minus k. It's a little bit of a tedious looking formula. This n k in brackets. This would be equal to the 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 factorial same same formula we saw when we were looking at combinations and permutations, so n factorial uh, divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. So, what does this mean? <clears throat> well, before we get into this exercise, where you know, we're going to compute the probability of tw uh, out of twenty students, it contains exactly five females. That's going to give us, if we use this calculation, it's something in the neighborhood of 15,000, I don't know, 15,000, it's a big number. So we'll keep it simple for now. Let's assume that uh, n equals 3, and we're going to use, uh, what's the probability that of those three, um, two of them are female. So we call that a success because that's what we're counting, uh, two females. So what this means, let's look at first how many different ways or how many different combinations uh, are there of, of two successes out of three. So if I have, let's say I have uh, one male and two females. So what this means, the first person who walks in is a male, the next two students who walk in are female. So that would be considered one success. Uh, what about female, male, female, there's another success, or I have two out of those three uh, are females, and finally female, female, male, uh, this would be another uh, success, right? I have out of those three who entered the rooms, uh, I have two that are females. If we enter these values into our formula, three factorial divided by two factorial, uh, times 3 minus 2, so 1 factorial. Uh, here we can calculate those values. Oops. Just move this out of the way. So in the numerator, I have 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 1 factorial. So this gives me a value of, uh, oops, of 3. So this is what we've identified here. We have these three, three different possible combinations of students uh, entering the room, uh, sorted by gender. So now we have three possible, co three possible uh, experimental outcomes. What are the probabilities now associated with each of these? So if I look at this first one, well, the probability, if I use the university's profile is to give me some idea of the probability of each of these uh, students or each of these genders entering the room, the probability of this, let's call this experimental outcome number one, the probability of the male coming in, well, that's 0.6. And then the probability of the female coming in, that's 0.4 and another female coming in, that's 0.4. So these are all mutually exclusive independent uh, outcomes. So I can just multiply these probabilities together and I see this is 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, so 0 0.096. 
So the probability of, of achieving this experimental outcome, given these probabilities, is 0 0.096. Okay, so let's go in through and do that again for the next possible experimental outcome. So now this is, a female comes in first, so that was a 0.4 probability, uh, then a male, and then a female. Well, as you can probably already see, the product of three numbers is going to be the same regardless of the order in which those, those calculations are done. So this is going to be 0 0.96. And again, if we look at this third one, well, this is 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. And so that's going to be exactly, exactly the same. So what do we have here? Well, <coughs> if our probability of a success, let's call that a, a P. So in, in this case, our probability of success, we're looking at the female, so probability of success is 0.4. Probability of, of failure is 1 minus P, so that's 0.6. So what we have here, each of these probabilities, it doesn't matter what order these are done in, so we can generalize this to say, well, the probability is then P times, well, here's, we have our two possible successes. There's two there. Here's one, and right? There's two possible successes in each of these experimental outcomes. So that's equal to our value K. So P to the power of K times and now here we have our probability of failure, 1 minus p, which in this case was 0.6, times now n minus k, which for us was 1. It was 3 minus 1, so the, the, the number of failures, uh, and here k, the number of successes. So now we have our probability associated with each experimental outcome, which as you can see is exactly what we have here in our general formula. So this is the probability associated with each experimental outcome. This is the number of possible experimental outcomes <clears throat> that we can achieve given those parameters. I have three and I'm choosing two. So then in order to figure out the, 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 the probability of that particular outcome occurring, it's the probability of each of those outcomes multiplied by the number of possible outcomes. So in this exercise here, I'm going to have 3 times 0 0.096. Oh, I'm writing right behind my face. Let's do it over here, 3 times 0 0.096, three possible outcomes, a probability of 0 0.096 associated with each of them. And so this gives us a probability of, there's this times 3, 0.288. So that means that if I'm looking at just the three students coming in the room, What's the probability that two of them will be female? There's three possible ways in which that might occur. The probability associated with each of those is 0.96. So we multiply that by the number of possible ways that I can achieve two successes out of those three trials. And here I receive that final probability of, two, uh, of 0.288. So that, that is a simplified version of how we can go about doing these calculations. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We'll also introduce in, in this problem using the binomial distribution tables, which can make some of the work a little bit easier. We'll go through the process longhand and then we'll also show the shorthand version. For example, here I can pull up my binomial tables and I can see, okay, I had, uh, I was looking at three trials, right, three students entering the room. I wanted to identify uh, what's the probability that at least two of them will be female. So here's 
k is equal to 2. My probability of success, so the probability of uh, one of those students being a female was 40, so in this top uh, top row, I need to look for my probability of success. Here it's not there, so I'm just going to scroll down. Here I can see, okay, there's my probability of success right there, it's 0.4. Number of trials, I'm going to say is 3. And two successes, I'm going to come over here, and wouldn't you know it, there's the probability that we just calculated, uh, 0.288. So that's when we have three trials, I'm looking at the probability of two successes, two females out of three students who enter the room, when the probability associated with one female entering the room is 0.4. So there we have a longhand and shorthand method of calculating these probabilities. So that's uh, that summarizes it. Uh, I thought this would be a short video. Now I'm at 11 minutes already. Uh, so now we'll go through, uh, I'll start another video, and we'll go through this exercise uh, uh, more completely. Okay, good. I hope this helps.